Welcome back. After several years of inflation and higher interest rates, the impact on businesses and consumers is quite evident. Here's a look by the numbers. First, sentiment at 19%, better but not great, best describes how businesses are feeling in what's been a long, steady decline in sentiment over several years. Fewer than one-third are now expecting a recession at all, with 24% expecting a mild recession and just 3% looking for a severe one. But not knowing is the biggest problem. 56% of firms say uncertainty is their biggest concern, followed by 52% which say cost pressures and 49% point to consumer demand. Uncertainty and high borrowing costs have added up to weak investment. Businesses are planning no growth in investment next year compared to the historical average of 16% growth. The good news is that consumers are feeling better. 52% now think the economy may slow down this year, but that's down from 62% at the end of last year. And while high rates are still a concern, a growing number of renters, more than 18%, say they plan to buy a home in the next 12 months. Inflation has made many expect higher wages. For private sector workers, the expectation of wage growth is 3.18%. For public sector workers, 2.34%. Well, uncertainty combined with that higher borrowing cost does seem to be keeping a lid on businesses willing to invest in themselves. That, of course, costs the whole economy. Randall Bartlett is Senior Director, Canadian Economics at Desjardins. Randall, thanks for being with us. Thanks so much for having me. And, of course, that weak business investment when businesses literally spend on themselves is one of the things we would point to for this concern about productivity we're seeing a lot of talk about. I wanted to step back and ask you, is this one of what you might call a hangover effect from inflation being around for a while? High interest rates makes borrowing more expensive for businesses, too, so they don't invest. That's yeah, certainly a big part of the problem. When you look at uh, you know how high input costs have been for businesses, you look at how high borrowing costs have been for businesses, and then you look at the weakness in uh, consumer demand uh, that we're seeing now because of the fact that rates are high and inflation is high. All of those come together uh, to basically you know make it a very difficult environment for uh, businesses to to want to invest for the long term and to really take that uh, that plunge. So we have talked about the fact that our, uh, you know, our standard of living will be hurt if we can't improve our productivity. Businesses have pointed the finger at government here, Randall. Government has pointed the finger at businesses. Probably the truth is somewhere you know, that we would say both. What is the best way, in your view, to encourage businesses to, to invest more in themselves? Well, I think you need to, first of all, identify what the problem is and why businesses aren't investing. And I think one of the characteristics of the Canadian economy that differs from a lot of others is that we have a very large share of small and medium-sized businesses uh, in Canada relative to other countries. And even those businesses in Canada are much less productive than similar sized businesses in the same industry in other countries. And so I think we really need to look at what the opportunity is for policy to support small and medium sized businesses to invest in uh, new technologies and digital uh, technologies um, and uh, also, you know, innovate, innovative processes uh, to allow them to uh, to increase their productivity. And we know that small businesses recognize that there is that opportunity there. They mm -hmm. just may not have access to the financing or the know-how to be able to do that. I've seen some, uh, some analysis that suggests that uh, while we may be uh, more supportive of small businesses than we have in, historically, medium-sized businesses get left out in the cold a little bit and that, in fact, some of our tax incentives work against them. They're better off staying small in some ways uh, because they get more support. Do, is there a bit of an anti-business sentiment in here? Do we Are we kind of punishing people for being successful? I don't know if we're necessarily punishing people for being successful in as much as uh, I think they, it's, an, it's an unintended consequence of, uh, of some of the policies that we have. I mean, some of them are, you know, tax credits for research and development that were introduced by liberal governments, kept by conservative governments, expanded by subsequent liberal governments. So it really just seems to be something that, uh, you know, across successive governments were just uh, unable to really sort of move the needle on providing that funding that supports companies that are growing quickly as opposed to supporting companies just because they're small. Do you feel as though this is an issue we could easily fix? And by this, I guess I mean encouraging businesses to start spending. 
Well, certainly, I think what we need to do is uh, is uh, you know focus on creating the incentives that for businesses to invest. And so, part of that is uh, rolling out investment tax credits that have been put in the window but haven't yet been funded. And mm-hmm. I think we need to really get the ball rolling on that. The other one is that a lot of businesses have been using uh, temporary labor uh, instead of uh, of investing over the long term. And I think recent changes by the federal government will probably uh, provide a greater incentive for some small businesses, certainly, and larger businesses as well. Uh, to invest in long-term productivity enhancing uh, technologies as opposed to uh, filling short-term demand uh, with uh, temporary labor. Randall, so good to have you for this. Appreciate your time. No, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Randall Bartlett is Senior Director of Canadian Economics at Desjardins. Better but not good also describes how the business expectations index reads. The Canadian Chamber of Commerce measure of sentiment shows concerns about consumer demand is a key issue for business right now, although overall costs driven by inflation remain a top worry. Stephen Tapp is chief economist at the Canadian Chamber of Commerce. Stephen, thanks for being with us. Thanks a lot for having me on the show. So, I mean, it's timely, of course, to talk about um, labor issues, which businesses also identify as a real key issue. But the inflation and, uh, and, and how consumers are feeling, two logical things for businesses to worry about, right? Their own cost of doing business and whether they can sell their products. On those measures, how do you, how do you think it looks? Uh, well, I, I think the overall uh, message from our, our business expectations index is that uh, businesses are really in a, in a kind of a cautious uh, holding pattern right now. They're they're seeing weak demand right now. Um, overall, interest rates are high. Uh, cost pressures are, are there, and so they're sort of in a wait and see mode right now. And so, uh, waiting and seeing for would you say it's rates to come down, uh, inflation to come down, or some kind of big boost in consumer spending? Uh, the overall sort of uh, dominoes to fall with the Bank of Canada reducing interest rates uh, likely in, in June or July starting the summer. So as interest rates come down, uh, consumers will feel more likely they're able to spend money. Uh, business sales will pick up and and, consumer, and businesses on that side will start to, to make stronger plans for investment. We saw in the Bank of Canada's consumer survey this week that there is this expectation of inflation hanging in around 3%. Whether it's right or wrong, consumers think we're going to see a higher level for out to five years. Does that surprise you and does it worry you that we might actually be pricing in at a level of inflation that we don't necessarily need to? I think that's the big concern. Uh, people have been worried about this last mile problem for inflation. So uh, you've seen consumer, the Bank Canada's most recent surveys, so consumer uh, inflation expectations are still elevated. Business expectations of, of inflation are starting to come back down. They're relatively anchored. But uh, yeah, the, the big concern would be that inflation would not come back uh, to 2%. It would, would take a while to get there. One of the uh, one of the big arguments against more government spending, Stephen, is that it is having an effect on businesses and their willingness or ability to borrow and invest in their own business. With that in mind, as you look ahead to a federal budget headed our way, although it looks as though it will all be leaked before we get the document April 16th, uh, what would you like to see by way of kind of fiscal balance, uh, reining in spending, perhaps uh, maybe even thinking about getting back to uh, balance or even surplus one day? Yeah, we're, we're not looking for any uh, major spending and big, big entitlement or, or social spending programs coming out the door. As you mentioned, we'll probably see a lot more uh, announcements in, in the coming weeks before the budget, but uh, really looking for the government to hold the line on spending and uh, get the deficit m- numbers kind of back back in order uh, and improving the overall outlook because that's really what businesses need right now is, is more certainty and more clarity in terms of uh, what they can do going forward uh, in, an, in an environment where growth is, is slowing and we need to focus more on growth. How, if you could, do sort of because you do this continuing survey, Stephen, rate for us how you think businesses are feeling overall and the level of confidence and what that says about where we might be going economically. Uh, it's pretty weak right now. So we have we have a business conditions terminal where we do an overall assessment of where businesses are at. I, I would say if you want a five point scale, we're at about two, which is pretty challenging environment right right now for businesses. So they're uh, again in a, in a kind of a wait and see mode, uh, waiting for reduced uh, interest rates and waiting for consumer spending. And at that point in time, kind of looking to make some some longer bets and, and increase uh, their spending. Stephen, so good to have you. Appreciate your time today. Thanks a lot for having the show. Appreciate it. Stephen Tapp is chief economist at the Canadian Chamber of Commerce. Coming up, how a cap on high interest loans may affect the most vulnerable borrowers. That's still ahead. But first, Donald Trump's social media business, Truth Social, went public last week with a huge market value, only to plunge this week after it disclosed mounting losses on minuscule sales and a warning from an auditor raising doubt about its ability to continue to survive. That shaved $4 billion off the value of the shares this week. In other words, it didn't take long for the truth 
to catch up to Truth Social. We're back after this.